continuing from where we left off. In this video, what I would primarily like to focus on is LoRa's embeddings, as well as the IP adapter, which is just image prompts. It allows for image prompts to be used and they sort of blend with your text prompts, which that'll become clearer the more you use the actual software. All right, so we're gonna be using the Add Detail LoRa. The reason why we're using that is because in the actual anime diff uh, CLI prompt travel repo in the, the provided uh, prompt.json file that they give, that's one of the, the LoRa's that they're using. And note next to it that it says LoRa support is limited. Not all formats can be used. So because of that, I wanted to use one that I knew the original creator was using so that we can just get up and running and then the community itself can test what works and what doesn't work. Um, to find that LoRa, I do have a link. It is a safe tensor file as well. Um, I'll supply that as always with the tutorial itself. Um, and then embeddings. Now you can find embeddings on Civit AI. Again, I'm assuming you guys already use Stable Diffusion, so you kind of know what some of this stuff is. Textual embeddings just are ways to uh, influence the, our generation, like, you know, maybe fixing up hands or making uh, the composition look a certain way. Um, these are the two that I will be using. You can find them on Civit AI, as I said, Hugging Face and more. So we're going to assume that you followed the first video and that you have Animate Diff CLI Prompt Travel uh, as your folder. You're gonna go into your address bar, you're gonna CMD again, and we want to activate our virtual environment. You gotta activate your virtual environment because essentially that's where all the data that the software needs to run properly exists. So just as we did when we first made the repo or the project, we would do VENV scripts, uh, slash activate and as you see from the side where it says V E N V that we are now running our embeddings are conveniently going to go in a folder inside data that is called embeddings so it already exists there is what I'm getting at um, so I'm gonna open this in a new window for clarity go inside of our project repo or directory and inside um, data embeddings that's what i will be pasting these two embedding files boom so for our loras on the other hand there is no lora file but it is all relative to the data file or rather the, the main project uh, directory so we're just going to put it here because that's where we have our control nets our embeddings and our models it only makes sense in my opinion so we're going to create a new folder and we're going to name it Laura. We're going to take our Laura and paste it in there. Again, there will be links to these items so you can download them on your own so you can follow along properly or you can use your own. So now that we have those two items in, let's take a look at our actual file. In this one, I pretty much just changed the prompt um, just to give you guys some more variety, you know, as well as I added two main uh, sections, which are the IP adapter map and the LoRa map. The LoRa map allows us to specify where our LoRa is and how strong do we want it to be in terms of influence over our image. And the IP adapter map it's just a way of one letting the system know we want to use it by enabling it where is the image that we want to use for example and whether or not we want to save it in our directory how strong it is and some um, parameters that dictate how ip adapter works which for now we're just going to keep those as true because remember we're just trying to get our feet wet. That's the whole point of this. That's why I haven't thrown in all the control net stuff and whatnot. I'm trying to keep it simple enough so that everything makes sense and we can build up to that. So now we want to set up our IP adapter reference image. In other words, our input image prompt. So if we go to data, you notice that there's an IP adapter image folder. Inside there, we have a directory called test and it says put PNGs here. 
Now the way that we're going to get a PNG file is uh, old reliable. So the stable diffusion um, auto auto one one ones ones uh, stable diffusion web UI. So I already have our prompt in here. It is the exact same prompt that we are using inside of our um, example JSON file, the prompt underscore IP. So I literally just use this exact same uh, head prompt as the positive prompt and this negative prompt here as the negative prompt. Um, the settings are pretty much the settings I'm going to be using for the generation, which are going to be 512 by 768. Uh, beyond that, the CFG and all those other parameters don't necessarily have to be the same. It's, it's more a matter of what you want out of it. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to generate something. I'm going to use whatever it makes because the point of this video is more so to get you up and running is not really to get the perfect output. So this is my output. I'm going to go to where the output is located and again in the animate diff CLI prompt travel directory we're going to data IP adapter image and inside the test directory and I'm just going to paste that image in there. I'm also going to rename it because it's kind of a hard name to follow. I'll just put 0000. It's real easy. You'll notice that for the example um, JSON file that I'm supplying for you guys, there will already be set up to find this directory here. So it's looking for the test directory, which is right there. So IP adapter image test, which is exactly what is supplied inside the input image directory. If you wanted to use another directory, you could just make another one here and name that and pass that in as well. It's up to you. Now, Technically, our system is set up. We have our LoRa's in the proper places. We have our embeddings in the proper places. And we have our input image prompt. So it's literally telling us what to do, but I'm just going to show you. So pip install media pipe. And that's really all it takes. So it's animate diff, generate dash C, the config locate or the location for our prompt file. Um, the width, which is 512, the height, which is 768, the length, which is 128, and the context for the frame. And we are golden. So looking at the output directory for our new generation right here. You notice that there is a folder that has been generated that says IP adapter. Now just for reference, I'm going to go to one of the older generations from the previous uh, video. Notice that folder doesn't exist here. That's because that's where our image prompt exists and it's showing us what the image is. The reason why the image is saved in there is because in our JSON file, notice that in the IP adapter map section, we're saying to save the input image. So we're going to let this do its thing and then see what our output is. All right, so our generation is finally done. I haven't seen what we have, so dope. That looks awesome. Got a little creepy there, but there's a lot of movement in this one, not for nothing. That's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, this looks really cool. So this is the input image prompt that we used. And this is the generated video. As you can see, there is somewhat of a resemblance between the two, at least the character's face for sure. But there is some kind of breakage in terms of one, the animation is a lot more wild and the clothes are changing a lot. I've noticed that lowering the the scale on the IP adapter map tends to influence how this works. I actually have a post on my Twitter, is it? So right here, 
you can see that when we have a lower value for the scale, it's much more stable. At 0.5, things start to get a little bit crazy, and at 1, things are just absolutely nuts. So I would recommend messing with that value to see how it influences your uh, generation. Again, that is this factor right here inside the prompt IP file. It is the IP adapter map, so the scale for it. So yeah, that has been a very basic rundown on LoRa's IP adapter map, so input image prompts and embeddings for our um, Anime Dip CLI prompt travel. Blessings.